Okay. Well, oh, here we go. Hey everybody, Doreen here, and this week we're going to be talking about Riot Games and the massive amount of releases they've done over the course of the last year, especially over the course of the last month. But before that, little update, it's been a few years. Yes, I'm back on YouTube. Uh, channel's going to be a little bit different. Not quite sure if I'm going to be streaming or not. It's still up in the air. Just a little update on me. Uh, currently living in Texas. Um, not for much longer. Got my culinary degree. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Job's going good. It's a lot of fun. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I do like to create and I do want to be back on YouTube. So here we are. Yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so it does look like CD Projekt Red has confirmed that Witcher and Cyberpunk both are going to be their main focus for the foreseeable future. The most exciting point of that is Witcher, right? So I thought after Wild Hunt, they were just done with Witcher. Girl's story's kind of tied up. Um, they got the TV show. I'm expecting comics. I don't know if they've been confirmed or not. I haven't really looked into that. But the fact that we're getting another Witcher game uh, is huge. Don't know if it's going to follow Geralt because at the uh, end of Wild Hunt or when they talked about the end of Wild Hunt, they were like, hey, this is the end of Geralt's story that's done. So um, not quite sure what direction they're going to go. But the fact that they are going to continue that uh, universe and, you know, increase the mythos of Witcher, there's really a lot of routes they can go. I'd kind of like Geralt's story to be done completely. I want something completely new and original in my preference, maybe a different school of Witcher, maybe even like a prequel game takes place before Geralt's story. That would be really cool. I don't know. We'll see what happens. The other end of that is Cyberpunk 2077. And I know a lot of us are still very like sour on how that went, but the fact that they're still progressing with the idea of Cyberpunk RPGs has got me just as excited as I was for Cyberpunk 2077, especially since given all the errors they've had and the success that they had in Witcher, I mean Witcher 1, let's be honest, was a rough game. Ew, you're weird. You're huge and ugly. Your hair's like milk. How come? <laughs> but Witcher 3 was great, and Witcher 2 was a lot of fun, so maybe having Cyberpunk 2077 be such a rough game will allow them to take a little bit more time and know what they need to work on so that the next one doesn't have the same reaction. So maybe the next Cyberpunk game will be what we always wanted Cyberpunk 2077 to be. And even though like my trust in them is a little waning because of it, you know, they gave us Wild Hunt, they gave us Switcher 2. Um, so you know what, like we know they can make good games and who knows, like maybe the next Cyberpunk will be great. Aside from that, in the same vein, Cyberpunk 2077 just got dropped down from $60 to $30 on Steam because of the autumn sale, and it looks like people are picking it up. Uh, a lot of people who didn't play it because it was too expensive and because of all the reviews and everything. And it's actually like the top rated game on Steam right now. Got very positive reviews. Uh, I do know there's hundreds if not thousands of patches and bug fixes that the PC version got. The consoles unfortunately didn't really get that same kind of love. Uh, partly because Sony, you know, pulled it from from their store, so I don't think they're really investing in the console side as much. If you have a PC and you like CD Projekt Red, if you wanted to play Cyberpunk, now is the time because it sounds like it's actually a pretty fleshed out game now, which isn't really that atypical for RPGs. Um, I mean, I remember the Skyrim release, like we all lost our minds or whatever, but it was a buggy mess, man. It was a buggy, buggy fucking mess. Um, I've always had hope that Cyberpunk was going to get it together, um, love the aesthetic. I enjoy it, personally, I don't mind the bugs, yeah it gets a little annoying sometimes. I never really had too many, but I've spent $30 on League skins, so like $30 on a game that's probably better now isn't that bad of an investment in my opinion, but you know, that's up for you guys to decide. But the main topic I want to talk today about is actually something I'm very excited about, and that's Riot Games. So. You know, I've been playing League since 2009, 2010, whenever preseason one was. About 11 years, I know that much. So I've been very invested in Riot. Uh, when I was younger, I actually wanted to work for Riot, went into computer sciences to, to learn how to do all that so I could get a job at Riot, and then, you know, ended up not not enjoying it. <laughs> but it's exciting now because I recently got back into League over the last couple months, uh, mainly because TFT was so good and then I transitioned back to Summoner's Rift and you know I've been enjoying myself playing a lot more casually. For Riot, 
recently has been releasing a lot of games. You know, you have the Arcane TV show, you have just a lot of content that expands the lore um, and really makes you more attached to the characters that we've had for so long and the lore has changed so many times that it's hard to really resonate with them. But especially with Arcane, it's really helped like build an attachment to characters, you know. I, I always loved to play Vi, but I never really cared about Vi. Now that I've watched the show, I'm like very invested in her. I picked her up again. I'm doing great. I love it. And it brings a whole new enjoyment to the game. With that said, traditional League of Legends Summoner's Rift isn't for everybody, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be. I'm happy that they're releasing different types and different genres of games that people enjoy so everyone can enjoy the lore, everyone can enjoy the characters, which is really Riot's strong suit is world building, art, and character creation. Like, they are one of the best studios. Uh, in that regards, in my opinion. So here's some of the projects they've released or are planning to release. Some of these, I'm sure some of you have played or heard about. So Legends of Runeterra, right? So that's their answer to Hearthstone, their answer to Elder Scrolls Legends, Magic the Gathering online. And the mechanics work basically the same. You know, you have your hand, you have your set mana, like any card game. <laughs> but where it kind of takes a change is that it divides the turns into one person attacks, one person defends, and then the next turn, the other person attacks, the other person defends. So you aren't attacking every turn. I haven't played it. I've watched some people play it. I have some friends who play it. It looks very interesting. Everyone seems to love it. It's good on the world building. It's good on showing you more of the characters, uh, which like I said, is right strong suit. And I think they're doing a very good job of that right now. And the biggest way they're excelling in that is with Arcane. For those of you who haven't watched it yet, watch it. It's just a good show, regardless if you care about League of Legends, especially if you don't care about League of Legends, to be honest. It, it helps bring people into the community. It's a very good show. The art is amazing. The animation is amazing. Voice acting is on top. Uh, the fight scenes are great. It makes you cry, makes you laugh, makes you want to punch a wall. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> But I think Arcane is the first example of Riot creating the Riot verse through their TV shows. I'm sure there's going to be comics. I'm sure there's going to be books. That's my expectation is that Riot's going to take a page from Disney where they do this with Marvel, they do this with Star Wars, and they're going to just bombard us with games. They're going to bombard us with shows. It's going to end up like Disney Plus's Marvel series, you know, where we're going to have like six of them a year down the road, right? Salem, what are you doing? So I'm expecting a lot more content on the TV side. I do know that we have no idea when Arcane Season 2 is coming out. It'll probably be a while, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to release another show. It takes place in a different part of Runeterra, involves different characters. I think you'd honestly be kind of dumb not to do that. They have the opportunity here with a successful show and successful games to really expand rapidly, and I think if they do, there will be a lot of success for them. And if they don't, then people might forget and people might just stop caring at some point, you know? But what's really interesting to me is the newly announced fighting game Project L. It did show like a testing trailer type deal where you see the four champions that they have, do some of their combos. It looks kind of like an Arc System game to me. Um, it is a tag system. Uh, so you'll have, you know, one character you're playing as, secondary character you switch out, kind of like Dragon Ball Fighter Z, but two instead of three, or which I think is really cool. So uh, there's not a lot on this game yet, but it's something to look forward to. I'm guessing it'll release in the next year. They already seem to have a working, you know, engine for it. They already have characters created. I doubt they're going to have a 20 character roster, so there's probably only like eight or 10 more that they're going to release. And then of course, like every other game, there's going to be the DLC characters. I, so I think a year is about a pretty safe range to expect this game. We'll probably see a full trailer and a beta, you know, mid next year, maybe in the spring. Uh, that brings us to the Rune King, which is a turn-based RPG that they just released kind of out of nowhere on console. And it's a narrative-driven turn-based RPG. It follows five characters, Ari, Brom, Iliao, Misfortune, Pike, and Yasuo. The art's fantastic. Uh, the story, I haven't played it. I've heard it's 
mixed. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. But it's a cool concept, and the gameplay from what I've seen is very good. I love turn-based RPGs. A lot of people that I know have alluded it to early Final Fantasy games is what the way that the turn-based combat works. Maybe not visually, but mechanically. So I think that's a really good pickup. It's like $40. You can get it on Switch, you can get it on PlayStation, you can get it on Xbox. Uh, so it's definitely something worth checking out. And then the last release that is announced. There's not really a lot of information on this, but they did confirm that they're making it. So there will be a League of Legends MMO, probably no time soon, maybe 2023 or something like that, which when I say it out loud is really only a year and a half to two years because we're almost in 2022 at this point. But I'm excited, you know, like we've been waiting for this for how long? We've been waiting for it a decade. And we're like, hey, like, yeah, all these characters, you got all this world, you got all this lore, why don't you just make a fucking MMO, right? And they are finally doing that. They're hoping that it's going to be end game uh, heavy. You, you know, they want the end game raids to be really big, which makes me happy because it makes me think of Final Fantasy 14. But they did also say there's going to be features in there that they know not everyone's going to love. Some people are going to love, some people are going to hate, but that they're willing to change them if the reception is not great, which is kind of scary to hear. Be like, hey, you might hate this game on launch, but like, we'll fix it. But at the same time, I like my MMOs to be different. I loved New World on launch. It got kind of stale after a while, especially not having people to play with. But I did appreciate what they did or what they tried to do. And same deal with like RuneScape, you know, it's it, when you have WoW clones, it's like, okay, I've been playing the same game with different skins for the last 15 years, right? So the fact that they're willing to do something different is exciting. I just hope they do it right. Cause MMOs are real easy to, to make boring in my opinion, you know, like you have to keep it dynamic. You have to keep it fun. You have to keep the lore good. I would like cinematic scenes to be top notch given like all of Riot's cinematic scenes. But you know, there's just not a lot of info on there, but we do know what's coming. So I think that's a really good thing to look out for. And I think that's going to be huge on launch. It's going to be huge on launch. We need a new MMO. We, we, we really need a new MMO out there. But all that in turn uh, kind of brings me to my bigger point, which is the Riot verse. You know, it's like I said, it's obvious that Riot is trying to build a wide net of content, right? They want everybody to be able to access these characters, access this lore, whether you're a gamer, even if you're not a gamer through the TV shows. That's why I think there's gonna be comics and shit and books because, you know, some people don't like TV, some people like to read, some people like physical copies. So I think we're in the early stages of that being developed. My question is, is it gonna suck, right? Is, is the Riot verse gonna be good? Is it gonna suck? And when I really reflect on it, I think it's gonna be a good thing overall. I don't see Riot putting out anything bad. They came out with League of Legends, fresh out of Warcraft 3. You know, I went from playing Dota straight to League and it was an improvement. It was fun. It was better. I know there's Dota 2 players out there who are gonna crucify me for this. And you know what? Like, Dota 2 is a great game. I just prefer League. I am dumb. <laughs> you know, like it was a good launch. And then, you know, 10 years later, they're like, hey, like, let's just make a, let's just make a fucking shooter just because like, let's just make a shooter. Alarin's like one of the top, you know, FPS games now, you know, and then they're like, yeah, let's just make a Netflix show. And then like, everyone loves it. And they're like, yeah, let's just make a card game and everyone loves it. So it seems like everything Riot touches is good, which means that it's either gonna continue that way or it's gonna go to complete hell. I don't think it's gonna go to complete hell because the culture at Riot is very, progressive and it's very heavy on giving fans things that they will enjoy. You know, they want it to be pretty, they want it to be deep, and they want it to be fun. And I think that's where a lot of people have an issue with Riot. They make addicting games, dude. Like, say what you will about League of Legends, but it is addicting. I stopped playing for a few years because I played too much. The issue is the community. It's getting into chat and having a 12 year old tell you that you suck and that he's gonna your mom but i grew up on halo 3 so like i got kind of thick skin of that but you know like that's the issue is, is the toxicity in the games and in the community and they, they have done a good job in improving that but i don't think any of their games are bad i don't think they put out a bad game so i don't see anything they do in the future being bad and i'm excited man like i'm excited to see what they put out excited to see where this goes and who knows maybe in five years oh you're gonna go to walmart and you're gonna buy a, a tiny little poro and you're gonna give it to your son and he's gonna start playing league of legends and then you know one day he'll be playing in a game and someone's gonna feed and he's gonna tell them that he's gonna their mom and the whole cycle will repeat and we'll all be happy and toxic together. <laughs>
Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, I will be doing these once a week. It's not always gonna be about Riot, obviously. It might not always even be about one topic you know, if there's a lot going on. But, you know, we'll do this every week. We'll just talk, man. We'll see what's going on in the world and what's going on with gaming. Um, maybe do some news when we have time and stuff like that. So if you enjoyed the video, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the little bell. Apparently there's like a little bell thing now and if you don't click it then like no one knows I make videos. Um, I kind of honestly, I'm going to be honest real quick, I'm going to be candid. I hate asking for likes and subs. I don't even know why I'm doing it right now to be honest. It's just a habit at this point. But uh, <laughs> you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.